All right, let's take a look at how this wire mesh actually is created. First things first, to be 100% transparent, this is based on a tutorial from Rocket Lasso from, I don't know, even a couple of years ago. I tried to find it, but I couldn't. If you can find it, <laughs> let me know. So uh, shout out to Chris Schmidt, who actually came up with this idea. I had to refine it a little bit to get a perfect result. You, you'll understand in a minute why I had to tweak it. Yeah, let's get started with this here. So um, here's the wire mesh that we want to create. And this is 100% procedural. It's based on a formula spline. Let's get a new document here. And I'll show you, I'll walk you through this real quick. We have this formula spline. And why I need this, because like the, the original tutorial is based on a helix spline. But when you use that, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to extend the patch of the wire mesh. And in my case, I had to do this for multiple microphones. I have to create individual wire meshes for each microphone and the gaps are bigger, smaller, thinner, thicker. So I need a rig that's 100% procedural. That's the one that you've seen initially. And that's why I need this formula effect. It doesn't work with the helix that Chris Schmidt has been using in his tutorial. Now with the formula um, spline, and this is something that everybody has been sleeping on. I, I even haven't used it before until I ran into this problem. So here's the formula spline. And what this does is actually it creates, as the name implies, it creates a spline based on formula. And when you now, um, to, to decrease the amplitude, you just have to tweak this value here. Let's put this to 50. This should already work. And when you want now want to ex extend this thing, you want to tweak this T max value and you see how this instantly starts growing and the amp amplitude stays the same. Don't worry about the, um, the sample count for now. Um, the samples here. Now, if you want to actually smooth this out, you would be, if you know, splines in cinema 40, you would be inclined to go to interpolation adaptive or uniform, but that's not the case. That's not uh, gonna work in this case. You wanna tweak those samples and crank them up. Uh, usually something around 200, 300 works. I'll put it uh, to 200. And now we have our base pattern here. And now watch what happens when I, tweak, when I tweak this Tmax value. See how this actually grows? And this is really hard to do with the helix spline. So that's what we need, okay? To actually um, resize the patch later on. Now put this into a cloner cloner and put it into linear mode and we don't want to grow in the y-axis but on the z-axis okay and up the count so this is actually our first step to get this first um plane of this weave pattern okay now with the cloner clicked we want to create an instance which is going to help us keep this procedural because whenever we tweak something in the cloner the instance is going to follow now this instance just rotate it by 90 degrees and then rotate it on the x-axis by 180 degrees. And now all of a sudden we might have to, we might have to reposition it. Just uh, look at this first row here. And once that is lined up, it should work with everything else. And now go back to the cloner and tweak this, um, this value here like so. And now you have every other, every other amplitude actually lining up with the according, uh, according row on the other side. And now let's see, let's see what happens when we actually tweak this T max value here. This thing grows bigger and bigger. And, and the thing is that depending on the size of the microphone, um, you have, you need bigger or smaller patches and it can't be too big because then you have too many folds in the simulation. That's the second step that we're going to take a look at and it can't be too small. So you see, you need a procedural rig to create individual wire meshes for each microphone. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's say we're in that position where we actually need a bigger patch. We just tweak this value here. See how it grows again. That's because of the formula spline, not possible with the helix. And then go into the cloner and just crank up this value and boom, you got your, you got your bigger patch. Okay. That's actually the base, the actual base of this whole thing. And, and now when we take a look at my actual rig here, again, this is the formula 
spline, the cloner, the cloner instance. I put that into a null. Now put that into a connect object. So Cinema 4D sees one object. That's very important because then I could put it into a sweep NURBS. When I disable this, you get this here. And uh, with a circle profile, really small, you get this actual, this actual wire mesh. What we're going to do now is actually um, click on this wire source null and right click and current state or connect object. And it will create this. Let's see how we can move this. It will create this single piece of geometry or spline that we're going to need for, that we're going to use for our simulation. Okay. In the second step. Now let's take a look at the actual simulation. Now here's my setup. So what I do is actually, I take this spline that we had created in the first step, this spline object and create an instance out of it. Okay. And this instant is later going to be deformed by a plane cloth simulation. The reason why we're doing this is we want to retain this structure here, this wave structure, any other procedure that you might be using is actually going to flatten this thing. And that's not what we want. When I, for instance, I, when I use spline wrap or any other method, um, I end up uh, losing the structure here and that that's not, that's not going to help because that's actually what we need to get this microphone, um, cage, um, wire grill look. Okay. That's very important. So what we want to do is actually use a helper, which is this plane. And I uh, added a cloth, a uh, cloth tack to it. And these two things right here, one above and one below, this is the collider where the plane is going, uh, going to fall onto. And I duplicated this shape and this is going to work like a casting mold template. And this will actually push everything in place and basically iron out any folds. After all, it's a cloth simulation. So we might end up with some uh, folds in the cloth that we don't want to have. But again, this is only affecting the plane that is being simulated. With the mesh deformer here, we're going to put that plane into the mesh deformer. And what that does is actually it takes this instance of our, our actual pattern, of our actual grill pattern, and it deforms this grill pattern according to what the plane is doing. And that way we end up with the shape that the plane has, has gotten from the simulation, but still retain the structure of this whole thing and not flatten it. That's what we want. So what this does, it falls onto this shape and it gets this um, whole structure here. As you can see that the whole spline is following and it still retains, as you can see, it, it still retains this wave pattern. This is what we end up with. I think it's around 60 or something. And once this is simulated, you can just go ahead. You just right click this null or middle click to select everything, right click and then connect objects. And what this does, it takes it as it is the current state and creates an individual, a single and single object out of it. And then, um, when we move this to the side, you will see that we have our final shape right here. We basically have a virtual molding process, just like it's done in real, in real life. And the reason why I'm doing this, see this arc, see this arc shape here. And that's what you get when you actually mold it. Maybe it's not very visible, but when I move it, you can see this arc shape right here. That's what you get when you actually, um, do it this way because any other way I would have straight splines and that would not look, look realistic. That's actually why I'm using this technique because that's the reason we are getting a very realistic result. See this stretchy, stretchy areas. It's stretched a little around here at the top, but, um, here at the bottom, it's not as stretched and it has this arc arc shape. Okay. And that's actually the cloth simulation. So now when we have this, Let's switch over this. This is the original that I had. We would just go ahead. Um, let's take this, go to points mode. And then in points mode, we just want to select this and clean this up and boom, there's your final structure. This is basically what we did. And then when I, once I have this, I can of course go ahead and put it into a sweep NURBS and then put in a circle 
a circle profile. Where is it? No, right here. And when I resize, resize that, I end up with my, hang on a second. I end up with a perfect, with a perfect wire mesh grill. Okay. That's exactly what we need. And as you can see, there's no, everything is connected, no seams, no nothing. And it is only stretched to an extent. Now we can see this arc, see this, um, this movement here, and it's more dense around here and it's more stretched out around here. And that's exactly what a real microphone looks like. I could take this, this off and, and basically demonstrate it, but you can, you've, you've seen a microphone before. Okay. So that's exactly what it looks like. And again, once you go back to your procedural, procedural rig, you can actually change it to your liking, bigger gaps, thicker, thinner, whatever you need, and then proceed and go ahead and let that simulation run again. That's basically how I created this wire mesh rig and created all these um, wire grills for my Sennheiser animations as demonstrated. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope you learned something. This is, I created this channel only for 3D stuff. Next, I, I thought I'd branch off from my main channel, which only does 2D and sitting at 9,000 something subscribers. If you wanna, if you learn something and you appreciate this content, please consider hitting the like button. You know the drill, hit the subscribe button. And um, yeah, thank you for watching and watch out for more in-depth tutorials about product animation, Cinema 4D and title sequences and things along those lines. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.